This is Dispatches from Myrtle Beach with Charles Neal and my son, Link, from Good Mythical Morning. Hey, Link, how you doing? I'm doing good, Dad. Ooh, good to see you in all of your patrioticness. You are wearing a sleeveless American flag. Yeah, I thought about you. I said, you, you, you're you going to have to make sure to get one like this so you can show off your new tattoo that you're getting done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still, still got to get it filled in, but... um. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I got to go, go with the sleeveless. I could do that. Can't, yeah. And then the backdrop is, is different. Oh, and that's what I wanted to... You know, I, I told you <laughs> Full a, of a couple of weeks ago that we had a you new backdrop where we were sitting... Uh, like I was sitting right on the beach here at North Myrtle Beach. Yeah. But now I'm going to move out of the way and see. Now you can see the sun set. Oh, that's beautiful, Dad. Look at that. I see the sun. The sun is setting right into what looks like your closet. I think there's a little <laughs> bit of closet. Well, yeah, go ahead and go ahead and back up. Give me, go ahead and model your entire shirt too. Can you stand up and, and mock like, Key West, okay. <laughs> Key West, far. Stand up. Oh, look at him. <laughs> oh. Uh oh. I think we took. I think he just broke the internet by standing up. Yeah, I didn't even see you. Stand up and do a model for me. <laughs> look at him. Look at him. He's 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 flexing his muscles. <laughs> Now, um, don't take this question the wrong way, because uh, I only mean positive vibes with it. Do you wear this shirt in uh, public? Yes, I do. Okay, okay, wear great. To, wear it to the beach. Yep. All right. Wear it at the wear it at the Fourth of July. Celebrate the Fourth of July. Yeah, Fourth of July is 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 big for you, right? I mean, it's always. Oh yes, yeah, it's, it's a it's a big time down there in North Myrtle Beach. But so you you got over Lincoln's graduation and uh, yeah, it's been it's two weeks and I'm still angry about all those people. <laughs> uh, but I, 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 the yeah. good the good news is that I feel like most most people are on my side, you know oh, from yeah, the feet, from so. you know. But I'm still suspicious that some of those people who say they're on my side still pull out their phone and film dumb stuff that they shouldn't be. But don't, why, why are you getting me back in that headspace? We're, talk, just, we're trying to be patriotic, we're trying to be positive. Yeah. I'm feeling good. We're moving forward. Yes, I put yeah. it behind me. And I, I'm going to throw one more thing because it, it'll already be passed, but uh, happy Father's Day about a week or so ago. So yep, let's go yep. ahead and get that out of the way. Me and you both being, I guess... Pretty good fathers. We've, we've been pretty good fathers. <laughs> we, we, we wear our heart on our sleeve, even when we don't have sleeves. And um, you know, I, I I know how much you love me, and I think my kids know how much I know. My kids know how much I love them, and it's uh, oh, that yeah. that that's the core. That's the core of it, right? That's right. And um, that's right. if you're if you're doing things that that demonstrate that unconditional love and just that that allegiance to keep it positive to keep it patriotic um i think that goes a long way so yeah i love that you're my dad and again i love that we do this and i know yeah because we kind of skipped over father's day um on this show because we do every other week but um yeah oh, which actually reminds me we've got some stuff coming up to kind of fill in that gap. You know, we've been thinking about, all right, since we're doing every other week of the show, is there a little something that you could give people in the stream like they, they, that they could listen to uh, on the weeks where we're not doing an, an official dispatch of Myrtle Beach, like a mini dispatch type of thing, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. So be on the lookout for that. How you yeah, feeling about we, it? Y'all yeah, need to watch, but watch for that because, um, you know, some some of you miss me uh, in them uh, in between weeks. So we're gonna try to try to give you a, that's right a little something to keep you uh, caught up on things. So just 
Just be looking for it. Just like, and it would just be like a couple of minutes, you know? It'd be like a short little thing just to hold you over, just to tide you over Myrtle Beast until we can we can reconnect like we are right now. So, yeah, I like that idea. And it's because, you know, it just gives you some time to express yourself, Dad, and have a little fun in a different mode. And just see where it goes, you oh, know? Yeah. Like, like yeah, trying, I like happens. trying new things. Yeah. Maybe you do too. Oh, yeah. You know I like to try new things. <laughs> so be, be on the lookout for that in your feed, Myrtle Beasts, uh, on, on off weeks. Well, Link, I, you know, uh, you got me to wearing this, getting my hair cut with this mullet. Uh-huh. We got a holler out to Alice Dines Allen. Me and my brother William are huge fans from Manchester in the UK. Cool. And I'm an illustrator and have drawn you both with mullets. <laughs> you got a picture of that, Logan? Yep, pulling it up right now. Look at that. Yes. There it is. Oh, man. Mullets of Myrtle Beach. That is great. We, we might see if we can get a copyright for that and see if I can have a T-shirt made like that, Logan, <laughs> for me and Link. <laughs> I got you, Charles. I'll yeah. get on it. Okay, yeah. You got, <laughs> yeah, I think that could work. That's beautiful. What, what, what's, well, I, I what's thought that name? was Alice? pretty neat, somebody that, uh, yeah. And Alice William. Dines Allen. Thanks, William. That's awesome. And William, yeah. The mullet boys. I, li- I like my mullet. I'm glad you kind of instigated and got me into this. So You're welcome. It, it was a good thing. Yeah. And now we're in it together and immortalized in, in artwork. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? <laughs> I've been immortalized in some stuff, but it ain't never been no artwork. Are <laughs> oh, you talking about like a wanted ad? <laughs> well, I don't know about wanted, but it, you know, might, it, might you know, something I probably did that I shouldn't have done years ago. So, oh, uh, that court people records. Remember, yeah, that too. <laughs> 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 okay, all right, I mean, all right. I ain't perfect, but. Uh, who is? I turned out all right. You did. You turned out all right. So That's right. It's time for another edition of Myrtle Beach Mailbag. I got one from Jen Barbati. Okay. I think that would be Jen Barbati. Said, she sent a question in and says, What do One Direction, the band, and 70s porn have in co- common? 70s porn okay. have in common. Now, if if they wouldn't have clarified that it was One Direction, the band, would you have known what One Direction was? Uh, yeah, I think I have heard a little bit. I mean, I, I ain't never bought one album, but I I, th- I'm, I think I know who One Direction is. Like, what do you what do you know about One Direction? Uh, very little, but I know they're a group. I think it's a, a bunch of guys that sing together. Okay. That's okay. Uh, yeah. Do you know any of their names? No. Harry. Mm. Styles. Oh, that's it. How'd you get that? <laughs> well, it's kind of what the. Answer to the question. <laughs> oh, so I, I just helped. You. All right. So what does you help me? What does One Direction, the band, and seventies porn have in common? Harry Styles ain't a porn star, is he? He's mm. just in One Direction band. <laughs> right. Right. He, he's just a very talented musician who used to be in One Direction. They they kind of gone their separate ways. I'm a I'm a fan. Um. Now seventies porn. I can't say. I don't think I've ever seen any. And I'm sure you haven't either, right? No, I ain't never seen that. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Good. <laughs> but I'm betting that there was, since I know that it's related to Harry Styles, I bet you that the style down there were more hairy. So I bet oh. you, I bet you it has something to do with that. I don't know. In the 70s, they didn't have, uh, they didn't have clippers. I don't know. Oh, yeah, there was a lot of different Harry Styles in the late 60s and 70s, kind of like this mullet, but it was down there. Long hair, and yeah. 
Oh yeah, but down I'm there. down there. I, okay. I don't know, but I I ain't, I ain't never try to style that down there, so <laughs> that's out of my league. Oh well, once you do, you never go back. I will. I'll tell you that. Just in theory. Just in theory, I'm saying that once you style down there, you you never you never go back. I I um, and I and just in theory, I do highly recommend it. Oh, okay. Just in theory. Just in theory, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, that's another thing, kind of like peeing in the shower. So I'll just have to. Do yeah, that. but you got to be careful because you don't want to draw any blood. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Which, just in theory, could happen. Just in theory. Can we move on? This yeah. is this is getting to be a little painful and um, too much self disclosure for me. You know, I'm a private person. I think I've made okay, that. Okay, I got another email. We're gonna move along Thank and you. Uh, talk about an email from Dylan Leahy. Okay, Dylan says, "Why do guys with foot fetishes never win? Why do guys with foot fetishes never win? First of all, no judgment." Um, I get, I can't, you know what? I might be developing one of those, honestly, dad. Um, I've just been, I've just, I love Christy's feet. Like I've just, you're so, they're so, you know, she's a, she's five, nine, but she's got this little foot. It's just such an adorable little foot. I love it. So I have a, I have a foot fetish of, for one. So I get it. I get it, guys. Um, but why do they never win? Because they love the taste of defeat. <laughs> oh, is that? I didn't know that's what they. So if you have a foot fetish, you like, you like, suck the toes. I guess. I guess it does follow. I guess it follows. I mean, I've I'm never done that. that. Have you ever done that? Suck to suck to toe. I'm not going to answer on that question. It might incriminate me. Well, no, it would just be that no. You that did would it. be a yes. Okay, there you go. <laughs> I think you just incriminated yourself. <laughs> it ain't nothing wrong with it. It's no crime. No. Ah. <laughs> uh, okay, I would just have to. Um, I don't know. I'm just not. I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. But when I found out that like people that I love and respect and I don't know. You've given me something to think about. Well, you can just rub and massage. That's all right. All right. Yeah. 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 Just kind of ease into it. Maybe just do. Maybe maybe I find myself sniffing a little bit after a while. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I reckon so. I'm 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 always open to new intimate adventures with full consent. That's right. So I'll I'll see what I can do, Dad. I will report back. <laughs> okay. You ain't got to do it on the show. We, oh, am I, just am I gonna get, <laughs> I'm like, am I going to get in trouble? It's one thing. I mean, I, 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 we can talk about anything we want, but sometimes when you, you know, you don't want to bring anybody else into it. No. Okay. Dispatches from Myrtle Beach is brought to you by BetterHelp. Getting to know yourself can be a lifelong process, especially because we're always growing and changing. As I've gotten older, I've learned that I don't jump to conclusions and I think about stuff more and figure out what I really need to say to somebody and not just let it come off the top of my head. So it makes a little more sense when you do that and it don't hurt somebody's feelings. <laughs> <laughs> Therapy is all about deepening your self-awareness and understanding. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist who can take you on the journey of self-discovery from wherever you are. And some of the things I've learned that I know that better help can help you with is that you need to be patient with what you want to do and listen to what people can tell you and help you because you have to let that soak in and go with that instead of just making your own opinions up about stuff because it, it really helps when you get a different opinion from people like better help. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give better help a try. It's entirely online and designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Discover your potential with BetterHelp. 
Visit BetterHelp.com slash Dispatches today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash Dispatches. Well, I got another email from Lanthy Tran. Oh, Lanthy. And Lanthy, that's Lanthy got an unusual name, and you know, sometimes... I, I just think it's unusual, but I've never I heard like it either. It. Uh, it's not usual. It's better than usual. Super usual. But she sent a question. She, I've I have been trying to refrain from swearing. Okay. I want to clean up my vocabulary. I was wondering if you would be able to give me some southern phrases that I can substitute into my conversation at work. Lanthy been been cursing it up at work, and depending on the job environment, out here in LA in the entertainment industry, Dad, Dad, I mean, we just curse like sailors. It's just it's just part of everybody's just they just let let it fly. You express yourself in that way. It just it's just like a part of the. It's accepted in the work culture, but I think in a lot of places it's not. So. This could really be uh, of help to Lanthe. Yeah, if you lived in the South, uh, Lanthe, you'd probably have to clean this up pretty quick. You might get run off from somewhere. But uh, just to kind of help you out, uh, I, I kind of been thinking about because I, I have had the same problem you have that uh, – I, I have let some, as a matter of fact, I, I have just done some swearing when I ought not be doing it. So, oh. you know, you're not talking to, I'm not just giving you advice to somebody that hadn't tried to clean up what how I talk to. So I'm going to try, I'm going to try to help you out with this. This isn't, so this isn't bullshit. I mean, bull hockey. This is, yeah. uh, this is the real deal. The real, yeah. This is uh, sincere. From experience, and uh, you know, a lot. Most of the time, when you you do swearing, it's just you just go, you just get so used to it, yeah, that it just comes out of your mouth. So you kind of just have to learn how to refrain yourself. But one of the things I say is, "Good God, a moochie." <laughs> good God, a moochie. Yeah, good God, a moochie. Instead of saying. Whatever you say, and is that a good one though? Is it is that is that positive? When like when do you use that one? Like, give me an example when you would say "Good God, a moochie." Because honestly, I've never heard you say "Good God, a moochie." This is a new one for me. Well, I mean, if somebody was saying something to me, and you know, I I thought it was, you know, uh, out there somewhere instead of. Having to say a swear word with it, I say, say, good God, a moochie, you really did that? You okay. Know, uh, it's basically you like know, a, so. it's like, it's like WTF. What the? F- <laughs> yeah. Okay. It replaces what the? And then another one, just gosh darn it. But there's a better one than that. Dad gummit. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. Dad gummit is very, that feels very Southern. Dead gummit, and that when yeah. it comes out, like in that moment when you when you want to, if you want to say GD, but you don't, because like t- to me, it's like F word is like a is a big bad, but uh, GD is even worse. GD is like the worst, oh, yeah. right? Because then it gets religious, oh, yeah. and it and that you know that really pushes people's buttons, and like, um, especially. In in certain circles, like in the Bible Belt, like you don't take the Lord's name in vain, and that was the interpretation of what that was like a simplification of what it what that commandment yeah, meant. That was, would be correct. Yep. Don't curse. Don't cuss using with throwing God's name in there. Don't bring God into your cussing. <laughs> so then changing it to "Gosh darn it" is too weak. It doesn't accomplish anything. Dad, gum it. Still has that percussive element of just anger, and it gets it out there. Yeah, where you, where you're exasperated and trying to get your feelings out there about what's been going on. Yeah, so give give, give me that give me that one. Let me like 
what if somebody, somebody, I came up behind you and I gave you a wet willy and I know how much you hate that. All right, so right now, like, I'm gonna pretend I'm doing it through the internet and you just give me a good dad gummit and then we can get your next one. Dad gummit, Link, don't do that to me no more. <laughs> and the look on your face is, is very real. Okay, all right, all right, all right. I'm sorry, Dad. That's me. I, I know you need me, me in business. That's the one you needed to go with. What else you got? It's, it's got to do with some religion about it, but, you know, when I tried to... Uh, Quit swearing and swearing so much. I, I just I asked the good Lord to take it away from me and oh. not do it so much. Oh. So that's my other advice. And whether or not you're a religious person or not, you know, that that's fine. But that that's a way it helped me. To, knew that he, did, he didn't want me swearing. So uh, okay. it helped me to ask him to, because he can help you with a lot of stuff without swearing and and I'm not gonna get on that phrase with you, but I, I just think he can help. He can help a lot of people with a lot of things going on in their life. So I don't. I mean, me. I think I disagree, Dad. We're in a different place with this one because I'm like, I don't think God cares. I mean, I think there's a lot bigger things to worry about than. I mean, you you don't not not to say bad, but don't say bad words. Like I've started saying a lot more bad words now that I realize I don't think it matters. I think as long as you do it as a if, if there's a right way to do it, there's there's an appropriate place for swearing. I mean, right? I mean, because it it's in form of expression. Uh, if you're like, I mean, I there's some that I'm kind of fond of. Like, if you get hurt, you want to say you want to say shit, shit. Now I'm a lot older than you. What's so? And... What's wrong with it? What's wrong? What's wrong with cursing? Why did? I mean, you feel like you want to pray for God to help you not to curse more. Why? Uh, that's just what I believe. I mean, is it more about like the self control of it? Like, I, I I understand that. It's like you don't want to. It's just the way I grew up in different different cultures and stuff than young people do now. So I mean, and I ain't gonna change. So yeah, I'm not trying to change you. I'm just I I, oh, I know I'm that. just interested. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I think you got a lot of out of your system. I didn't. Oh yeah, I didn't cuss at all because I, you know, I think you did from the sound of it. And now it's like oh. we're now we're now we're like crossing streams. Now I'm taking all. I'm 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 ba I'm balancing the force. I'm the one cursing, and you're the one not cursing. Well, I didn't say I didn't curse. Him. <laughs> okay, I, good. I ain't going there. You know, I, I which ones are you? Which that, ones are you hanging on to? I said, well, most of the time it might be shit. I ought not have done that, or damn it. Yeah, uh, you know, them two words is probably the two I ain't been able to get rid of. Uh, I think I those are great. Them. Those are great, and yeah. they're kind of innocuous. Like shit is, the, I think, the best curse word. Yeah, <laughs> I'll never forget. Rhett said that. I remember one time he came into. Uh, it was like the elementary school lunchroom, and he was like, "You know, my dad just came back from a trip to Vermont, and he said that they say shit on the radio up there. Like they'll say chicken shit, and so when they're talking about excrement, they use the word shit, and it's totally fine. It's on the radio. I I'll never forget that. Don't lose that one, Dad. Come on, ain't, ain't got, nobody cares. I probably ain't, but you know. I think God loves the word shit. Well, I think He loves everything about us. He, and he, that he he might agree with some of the stuff, but He just loves everything about us. So, uh, <laughs> Lanthe, I don't know if, if I helped you any with that, but you know, you you just have to take this shit and carry it wherever you want to. <laughs> <laughs> we That's about right. Helping you to quit cursing so much, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a big one. Just get rid of those, that, you know. But keep a little shit in your life. All right, I I got another email from Lexi Pierce. Okay, and she said to make some extra money, I took an afternoon job as a custodian at a primary school. And just remember, primary school. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. The money is great, and the work isn't too hard, 
But there's just one problem. It's so dadgum boring. Dadgum? Clean. Yeah, dadgum. Lexi actually Clean. said dadgum? Yeah. Yep. What? She, she wrote, wrote it on this thing, so. Well, you're not says, shitting me. No. Hmm? I'll be damn. Cleaning a, cleaning a primary school consists of vacuuming crushed goldfish <laughs> out of the, on the carpet, wiping poop smears off the bathroom walls, Ooh, talking about shit already, and scrubbing yep. invisible glue off tables. I ain't really got. I ain't. I don't know about understand about this invisible glue. How she can see to clean it, but whatever. Good point. And while and while listening to all, listening to your your all's podcast definitely helps the dread. I need help making cleaning fun. Well, Lexi, I, the first thing I want to tell you is. That um, I think that uh, you taking on a second job to make to make some extra money is very commendable, and and because listen, there's a lot of these a lot of people in this world that don't even work one job, and you working two to try to make ends meet and make it, you know. So, I uh, you know, I'm gonna go somewhere like you did with your tantrum later, <laughs> last last two weeks. Go off, ago. Dad. Oh, you don't you don't like freeloaders, don't loafers. Know. I don't like I don't like people that don't work. And with all the jobs that's in this world, you can get a job. And and it, it there's a lot of people that work at these fast food restaurants and all these places. You could get a job there. They do pretty well for themselves too. But anyway. I'm gonna get back to Lexi. Lexi, I, I think you you probably got this started out on the right beat because you already listened to dispatches from Myrtle Beach and what me and Link's talking about. Now I know you probably can't listen to us for four or five or six hours, but you know you can probably hit it a couple of times and you know. Another hour goes by and hit it again and listen to us and <laughs> try to try to see what's going on. But take a hit on dispatches from yeah. Myrtle Beach. But the other thing I thought about Lexi to, to make you smile and where you're working because it's a primary school. Just think back to when you were in primary school, and I. I you probably won't like me. I was I was pretty mischievous in primary school, and I think about it, and and I it, it just makes me grin and laugh when I think about some of the stuff I did. I still ain't understand how you uh, know where you scrub invisible glue off of tables. You need to send me another email about how do you know where the invisible glue's at, because <laughs> it makes me laugh to try to figure out. How are you figuring out where the invisible glue's at? So exactly, you know. <laughs> it's invisible. How can you yeah. see it? Right. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to figure. Out. That's me too. So I like your advice. You say reminisce about when you were a student. I think there's some things. I think you can turn cleaning into fun by if they let you listen. If if you're able to listen to dispatches, I love that. You can listen to music. I think you can turn it into like a workout. The good thing about cleaning is that you can get your whole body involved. There's, and so you can invent new ways to clean. That's what I do. When I clean, I consider it a form of meditation. It gets you in your body, Dad, where you're like, oh, I'm waxing on, I'm waxing off, I'm wiping this shit off the walls, and then I'm polishing it. And it's kind of, you know, it's, you, you, can, you can get a nice workout. Get your body limber. Oh yeah. And maybe next week it's like, oh, I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna put this buffer on my feet and I'm gonna strut down the hallway. It's like, maybe, maybe you'll invent a totally new way to clean. Oh yeah. I don't know. You could also start a TikTok account. <laughs> you know, there's lots of good cleaning on TikTok. Trust me. Lexi, I hope that helps with your cleaning and uh what the make you joyous and happy about the second job that you've gotten, 
Hope that helps with it. Good luck. Now it's time for a word from our sponsor. We got a, I got an ad this week for the uh, Cherry Grove Pier 4th of July fireworks. Let's hear it. And it, every year, Cherry Grove puts a fantastic fireworks display on down, on on the pier all the way out at the end of it, Link, where you can go out and sit on the beach, or even as far as down as where we live at on the beach, which is probably a mile. Okay. But what's amazing about it is before those fireworks ever start, fireworks are illegal in North Myrtle Beach. Oh, to, really? To, to put them off on the beach. But you can buy fireworks at a store right outside of Myrtle Beach, North Myrtle Beach down here and set them off. But on the 4th of July, people line up and, and do them on the beach for about – the two hours up to where, and I'm going to tell you, some people spend four, or $5,000 on fireworks. I mean, they're amazing. We're sitting on the beach yeah. and watching them going, going off air. So, Freelance uh, Fireworks Hall of Fame is a song that we wrote many years ago because you, we would go from North Carolina down to South Carolina, and there were these people. You're right. They would spend thousands of dollars, and they would make their oh, own yeah. firework display that I mean, it might not rival Cherry Grove, but it would be no. quite a surprise to see it come out of somebody's backyard. You well, know, I'm telling. That's the that's the spirit of South Carolina. Like that's the first thing I think about. Like freelance fireworks Hall of Fame. These guys who and gals who are just willing to sacrifice fingers and to just to just to just make an amazing patriotic display. If you're down here at the beach on the 4th of July, you got a lot to look forward to about some fireworks at the uh, Cherry Grove Pier. Just don't lose a finger, Dad, or anything else. Just watch and enjoy. <laughs> okay. That's a highlight of the year out there on the beach, I know. Hey, I, I, I want to take charge for uh, a little segment here and, and go for it again. The, you're way over my head now. You up for that? I'm up. Yeah, go ahead. Let me see <laughs> See if I figured some of this stuff out. <laughs> You're way over my head, man. All right. Spilling the tea. You heard this phrase? What does that mean? That means um, that somebody told you something and you turned around and you, you, you're not supposed to tell it to anybody else, but you, you just let that gossip go and you just... Tell them about what's going on. You nailed you it. You tell it to somebody else. Hi, yeah. I, you know, you know that one. I'm. Did I insult you? Because no. I thought you didn't no. know that one. All right. What about goat? Goat is the somebody. I think. Uh, I've been hearing this some lately, and this, that's probably the only reason I might know the answer to this. Okay. But it's kind of like uh, choosing between Michael Jordan. And some other Kareem Abdul Jabbar, or I don't even recognize some people that LeBron, the, most of these people, LeBron James, that who's the best basketball player that's ever been. Do, is there more to it than that? Yeah, you are right. That's what it means. But could it stand for something? And here's a hint it does. G I T G. Just first thing that comes to your mind starts with a G, an O, and an A, and a T. Just tell, just tell me. Uh, got on at TV. I don't know. Got on at TV. That's a good guess. It's like Michael Jordan got on at TV. Uh, some rappers got on at TV, but that's not it. Try again. G. What's G stand for? Go for it. Gravy on my uh, at toast. <laughs> Gravy. On at toast? <laughs> you put gravy on toast? I put gravy on oh, a yeah. biscuit, but I've never put gravy on toast. Gravy on at toast. You yeah. never had you you eat sausage gravy before? Not on a not on toast. Oh yeah. Okay, fine. You're right, Dad, but that's not what no. GOAT stands for. Try okay, one more well, time. I'm sorry. Greatest. Greatest of all time. That's it. 
I say you had it in there. See, yeah. like, <laughs> All right. What about that slaps? That slaps. What's that mean? That means I like what you did. I like what I'm looking at. That's good. Yep. It means that something is really good, especially like a song. That song slaps. Dad, you're slapping hard today. Uh, what about sleep on? Sleep on. Usually in the context of don't sleep on. Just just leave me in this meditating state and let me ease right on into what what I what mm-hmm. I'm doing. And, nope. Uh, okay. Nope. <laughs> sleep if, on. If it, don't sleep on dispatches from Myrtle Beach because oh. it's gonna get you. It's gonna get you. Don't sleep on dispatches from Myrtle Beach. You gonna miss something. I mean, I, it doesn't mean that you actually fall asleep. It means that you metaphorically mm-hmm. fall asleep, like you you overlook it or you underestimate it. Okay. One more, glow up. That means that you get really excited about what's going on and you just uh, jump up and down like you're having a good time. When's the last time you had a glow up? Probably last Thursday night at the concert downtown. Oh yeah, you glowed with the up. With the, yeah, with the entertainers was playing. Enjoying the music and having a having a good time. I think you're thinking yeah. about turn up. You t- you okay. turned up at that concert, but glow up you would do before you turn up. Glow up is when uh, it's a makeover or a transformation from bad to good, and a lot of times it's like like physical appearance. Like wow, that's quite a glow up. Oh, well, hey, that that, may, that makes sense to me because, you know, when I wear my paint clothes and people recognize me from uh, working and painting and working and then they see me to uh, off somewhere like downtown or somewhere and they look at me like, well, I know who you are. Well, then they, they, they kind of figure out and said, well, you dress up, you clean up pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, hey, you did great, Dad. I will say you got your head above water on this one more often than not. Oh, yeah. So you weren't over your head Good today. Look. Yeah, yeah. Well, sometimes I even surprise myself. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 because we doing this show together, I, I keep learning a lot of stuff. So Yeah, yeah. I learned good gosh of moochie. So we're both learning some stuff. Yeah. Getting turned. Well, we got to, we got to get out of here and do some more stuff out here in the real world today. But for real, man, it was fun having y'all all y'all here today. Join us next week for my first mini dispatch. Ooh, I'll be listening. And, and hey, that's good. Yeah. And so, and then come on back in two weeks for our next dispatches from Myrtle Beach. Yes. And if you got a. a if you got a joke, a question, a comment you'd like to share with me, email me at ratherbeshagging53 at AOL, at, good gracious, AOL.com. There you go. Have a great weekend, everybody. We can't wait to spin your world around again. And next yes. time, come on back and we're, we're going to spin it some more. Mm-hmm. Like a uh, firework. Love you, Dad. Love you, too. All right.